So in the last video, we left off with a five gram puddle of water with the current temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. And I have a link below on that previous video because we're going to build upon those ideas. I highly recommend you watch it. But now that we've reached this boiling point, this 100 degrees Celsius of this liquid water, now what's going to happen if we add more heat? Well, because we're at the boiling point, now if we add more heat, now this water is going to start to vaporize. So for example, let's say we add some heat and now part of the water is going to start to vaporize. So now some of it has vaporized. So notice we've added this extra amount of heat. We added a certain amount of heat. And when we added that amount of heat, started, part of it vaporized. But you might wonder, we're still at 100 degrees Celsius. Well, originally we were at 100 degrees Celsius. We added this amount of heat and now we're still at 100 degrees Celsius. What's going on? Before when we added heat, we saw the temperature increase. But now when we're adding heat, the temperature is still 100 degrees Celsius. Why? Well, a really important point to realize is once you reach an object's boiling point, so we're, we're there, we're at, once you reach an object's boiling point, so this boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius, now when you add more heat, all that heat is preoccupied with vaporizing this liquid. So because all that added heat is preoccupied with vaporizing that liquid, there's no leftover heat that can be used to increase the temperature of that liquid. So that's an important point. And only once we've added enough heat to fully vaporize this liquid, then when we add more heat, the it will start to increase the temperature. However, until we fully vaporize this liquid, all the added heat is, is going to be used to vaporize the liquid and none of there will be no leftover heat that can be used to increase the temperature. So now what's going to happen if we add more heat? Well, again, if we add more heat, it's going to vaporize this liquid even more. So now even more of it's going to vaporize. But again, we're still going to be at uh, the same temperature. We're still going to be at 100 degrees Celsius because again, all that heat is used to vaporize the liquid. So again, we added this extra amount of heat and now we vaporize more of the liquid. And now let's say we add a little more heat. Now when we add more heat, eventually we're going to add enough heat where we fully vaporize this liquid. Now we've added more heat and now we've added enough heat to fully vaporize that five gram puddle of water. But you might wonder exactly how much heat does this represent exactly how much heat was required to fully vaporize that five gram puddle of water into water vapor? Exactly how much heat was required? Well, to determine that, we need to use this very important term referred to as the latent heat of vaporization. And all liquids have their own latent heat of vaporization. So let's say water happens to have a latent heat of vaporization of 1,000 joules per gram. And in fact, water actually has a different latent heat of vaporization. I'm using this because it's a simple number for simplicity. But I know this seems like a complicated term. What does this latent heat of vaporization tell us about a liquid? It essentially tells us about how much heat is required to fully vaporize that liquid into the gaseous phase. So now we can use a simple formula to determine how much heat was required to fully vaporize that, that given amount of liquid. So again, we use this formula. And again, essentially we know we had a five, originally we had a five gram puddle of water and we know water happens to have this latent heat of vaporization. So essentially what you do is you just multiply those two terms, the grams cancel and you multiply them and I'll tell you how much heat was required to fully vaporize that five gram puddle of water into water vapor. So now we know 5,000 joules of heat is, is required to fully vaporize a 5 gram puddle of water into water vapor. And just to really illustrate what's going on, let's do another example. Let's say we have a 1 gram puddle of water with the current temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. How much heat is required to fully vaporize a 1 gram puddle of water into 1 gram of water vapor? Well, again, we use our simple formula. Now we have a 1 gram puddle of water. And again, we know water has this latent heat of vaporization. So again, we just multiply these two terms. Grams cancel, we multiply them, and that'll tell us we need a thousand joules of heat to fully vaporize a one gram puddle of water into water vapor. And this makes sense. A five gram puddle of water requires 5,000 joules to fully vaporize. A one gram puddle of water requires 1,000 joules of heat to fully vaporize it into water vapor. So it makes sense if we have five times the amount of mass it requires five times the amount of heat. So, so that makes sense. It, it, hopefully that's, that's common sense and, 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 and intuitive. So now we have five grams of water vapor at a current temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. Now what's going to happen if we add more heat? Well, now if we add more heat, now because now that we fully vaporize the liquid, now when we add more heat, that heat can be used to increase the temperature of this water vapor. So again, so, so, so now... If we add more heat, the more heat we add, the larger the increase in temperature.
And again, it makes sense. And because there's no other phases beyond the gas phase, now if we keep on adding heat, we'll keep on increasing the temperature indefinitely. If we add a lot of heat, we'll keep on increasing the temperature. The more heat we add, the more, the larger, the more heat we add, the larger the change in temperature we'll observe, which essentially means the larger the increase in temperature. So we keep on adding heat, we add heat, we increase the temperature. Then we add more heat, then we increase the temperature more, and we keep on doing this indefinitely. The more heat we add, the increase the temperature, because we've reached the gaseous phase, and, and so now this will happen indefinitely.